Good evening, old landmark. God bless you. Good evening, saints. It's Bishop Amos live. Sister Hilda, God bless you. Sister Abby, First Lady Amos is on the line with us. Deacon Charles, God bless you. Good evening, saints. Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's Bishop Amos live tonight, and we are live. Got a great conversation coming your way. I know you will be blessed. As you come in, please share. We're found on Old Landmark Kojic Facebook. Please share with your group, with your friends. It's going to be a powerful discussion tonight with the prophets. I know that everybody can be blessed. says yes. Thank God that you're saved. God bless you tonight. We honor you and we praise God for you. And we're glad to be with you tonight here. Bishop Amos Live. It is indeed a pleasure uh, to see each of you. And we appreciate the blessings that God has given us, how he has made us one, strengthened us through his word and through his will, given us the things that we need to be the people that we need to be. So we thank God for you, and we thank God for his presence, First Lady, we thank God for you. And I'm excited about tonight. Some of you have been anticipating this time, and we're looking forward to it ourselves, and then because we have uh, one of the areas that is spoken of in the ministry as one of the main sectors, one of the main avenues, if you will, that lead to the highway of holiness. It is the area of prophets. So we're going to talk about prophets and prophecy tonight. Before we go, to go any further, we do thank God for our guests tonight who are with us. We have our own dear friend and son. We've known him for years. He's been with us a long time. He serves with me in the Puerto Rico jurisdiction, which I am uh, godly appreciative. And that is the person of our own uh, Brother Dre Parsley, Pastor Parsley as we know him. Pastor Parsley, say hello to the people. God bless you. <laughs> he's a very man of very few words <laughs> as well we thank god for prophet ray prophet ray is pastor 
uh, in the, in the, the state of Detroit, and they each will have an opportunity to express themselves, get a little bit of their history and who they are, and how they are related and connected to Kojic. These are Kojic men, Church of God in Christ. That's what we're all about on this program. Amen. Prophet Ray, say hello to the saints. Hey, bless the name of the Lord. Well, we thank God for each of you. Each has been to Old Landmark, so you may recall them. I know you know Brother Dre, who uh, was has been a part of our ministry for most of his life. A man and Pastor uh, Shipman has been with us as well. Uh, a, a few times we've come down with Pastor Darthania Nichols for the third Sunday services. But we appreciate these. These are not here simply as pastors. They're here because they have a unique, I call unique, uh, calling on their lives, in addition to the work of pastoring and serving as ordained men of the gospel in the Church of God in Christ, they serve in the ministry of the prophet. So before we go any further, we're going to thank God for each of you and pray God's blessing on this gathering, and let's let the will of God be done. Lord, we thank you now, and we lift up our hands towards you. Oh, you are worthy to be praised, none like you, none like you in the heavens or the earth. You alone are worthy to receive the honor of the whole earth bowing down at your name no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved and, and that is at the beautiful name of jesus thank you jesus thank you for your love your grace and your mercy thank you for the peace of god that has surpassed all understanding in our lives for you give us peace even in this troubled day. We pray, Lord, as we look to you and we lift up our eyes to you that you will reign on us tonight. Speak to our hearts, minds, shake some shackles of bondage that have been in our hearts and souls and our understanding. Let us hear what we haven't heard, see what we haven't seen, and have new understanding of the things that we need to comprehend. Let your will be done as you speak to us and as we grow in you. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we say thank God and amen now i need everybody out there live virtual wherever you are to clap those hands and give god some praise hallelujah, hallelujah. to his name hallelujah. lord you're worthy you're none like you anywhere yes. praise your holy oh name hallelujah. before we go any further i do thank the lord for the presence of first lady amen she is uh not just my first wife my only wife <laughs> but she is the first lady of the church at old landmark as well as the puerto rico jurisdiction so thank would you have a word God bless everyone. So glad to be here. Looking for uh, a wonderful discussion tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Amos. And truly, we appreciate her support. As usual, uh, to our uh, panelists, as well as those that are listening and in the audience, uh, Sister Amos will be watching the commentary. You feel free to place your comments. Uh, we are friends. It's a friendly conversation. And so uh, make sure your comments are saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Hallelujah, because we want the world to know that we Amen. are ever learning, and uh, but we plan to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Amen. We, we're going to continue learning, but we're going to learn what God is doing, what God is saying in this day. So Amen. if you have comments or questions, we may not get to all of them, uh, but we hope to get to some of them, and we will take your questions uh, as we go through further in this program. But we thank the Lord, as I said, for these guests. I'll tell you what, let's start with you, uh, Prophet, Pastor Ray Shipman. Why don't you come on and say hello to the saints and kind of do an intro of yourself uh, about who you are uh, as it pertains to your ministry and to Kojic, what, what do you do in life? And then uh, we'll come back around to find out how you have this unique title that you're so comfortable wearing called Prophet. <laughs> Well, um, again, my name is Prophet Ray Shipman. I hail from Detroit, Michigan, um, one of the greatest cities and states in the world, specifically the east side. That's just for <laughs> right? Um, right? <laughs> let's see. I am also the chairman of our um, district for the Freedom District under the auspice of Superintendent and Administrative Assistant D'Arthania Nichols. Um, we are in Northwestern uh, harvest ecclesiastical jurisdiction um, currently under the leadership of Bishop Cedric Daniels. Uh, I have been literally Kojic before I was born. Um, my heritage goes back, we were speaking about this earlier, to uh, Bishop W.G. Shipman. Uh, and anybody who knows any history in Kojic knows who he is, and anybody over the age of 60 knows exactly who he is. Mm -hmm. um, I have served in many areas in local churches and in districts. I uh, served as uh, an assistant secretary for 
uh, the agape jurisdiction. I was actually in under Bishop King. Uh, we served in Northeast under Bishop Brooks. So I have been involved in the Church of God in Christ and in ministry for all of my life. Uh, in addition to that, uh, of course, I am the senior pastor. I took over my father's church three years ago, and today we celebrated our three-year anniversary. Uh, I am also the apostolic overseer for uh, PAT, which is our prophetic activation training courses, where we mentor and activate people in the prophetic, teaching and training them from around the world, literally, uh, about the prophetic, um, showing them how they can be an asset to their local ministry, uh, EFOD, um, uh, which is a covering for prophetic voices uh, and a network. So connecting people to di different ministries that are helping build them. Um, <laughs> I'm an author, a writer, a singer. I think I got about 27 books out now on Amazon. Uh, yeah, I, I do a lot. And I'm a social worker throughout the day. So a husband, a father, and I get like two hours of sleep a night. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you got a few things going on. A couple. Okay. And we're honored that you took time to be with us tonight. And I mean that with all sincerity. Yes, sir. Prophet Dre. Unmute yourself first, Prophet Dre. There you go. That's that west side. <laughs> I told y'all. That's that west side. <laughs> That's that Saginaw. <laughs> Bless you, sir. Um, again, my name is uh, Andreas Parsley. I've been in ministry for almost 30 years. I uh, began as a boy preacher. My father in the gospel, Bishop Herbert J. Williams, the establishmentarian of the North Central Jurisdiction in Michigan. Uh, I was yanked into ministry after the Lord uh, anointed me in a prophetic moment and uh, gave me a uh, mandate to preach the gospel. I've been... Uh, I've served as the evangelism president for Bishop Felton Smith, uh, for Bishop Patrick Wooden. Uh, I've served as the uh, uh, secretary of pastors and elders council with Bishop J. Drew Sheard when he first took over North Central Jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, I am um, currently administrative assistant with uh, the right Reverend Bishop uh, Elton Amos, MD, <laughs> in the Puerto Rico jurisdiction. Absolutely. I, uh, I've been, uh, you know, in various capacities as a, a preacher, shipment said, prophet, shipment said, uh, just various capacities in the church. You know, when you're young and in the church and you're gifted, uh, they'll put you everywhere. You'll be youth department leader. You'll be YPWW leader, the praise team, music director. If you can sing a little bit, you'll be doing some of everything. And so uh, the Lord has blessed us to be able to operate in various capacities. I've also been the jurisdictional secretary for uh, the uh, Puerto Rico jurisdiction. I'm the executive secretary at, at the moment, as well as administrative assistant. And so uh, the Lord has blessed us uh, to be able to, you know, preach across the country as well as in Puerto Rico, as recently uh, for various uh, denominations. I also, I was baptized by Reverend Otis Floyd of New Jerusalem Baptist Church in Flint, Michigan, uh, when I was a boy. Uh, and so my roots uh, come not only from the Church of God in Christ, which I was a part of my whole life as well. But one of my aunts, Mary Frances Works, who was a great singer, uh, was a member of Bishop Otis Floyd's church. Uh, she's actually the lead singer on Lord, You Brought Me From a Mighty Long Way on their album, uh, mm -hmm. His Eyes on the Sparrow. Uh, and so uh, she sang with them on various albums and also led songs on various albums with them. But I was first baptized under Reverend Otis Floyd. Well, he was later Bishop Otis Floyd in the full gospel, uh, full gospel Baptist uh, movement. So... So importantly, it appears and it's clear that both of you have a strong Kojic history. You're not strangers to the church. This has been your your uh, experience and your the culture because Kojic is more than a denomination. It's a culture. Absolutely. And someone made a comment to me the other day about so, so and so's no longer Kojic. And I asked, how can you be no longer Kojic? That's something I don't even understand because even people who move to other affirmations and other works and pastor other in other denominations they'll still tell you oh i was born kojic i'm still kojic I, I just work 
in the Methodist church. I'm still coaching. I'm a musician at the Baptist, but I'm coaching. Coaching's my church. It's something we generally don't let go of, and we embrace and we love what it has offered us and what it has given us. Not saying we're the only church that's right, although I've heard that before, uh, but I am saying that uh, we believe that it is a great cultural environment that we never uh, a source out to deny. We try to hold on to those roots. But one of the things that we see happen in our church that uh, is slow to change, our nomenclature, our culture, our traditions, and just as the women's department, women's work, uh, and before I go any further, we thank God for our supervisor who is on, uh, Mother Dorothy Dillon. She is the supervisor of women for the Puerto Rico jurisdiction. Mother Dillon, a shout out to you. God bless you and to all of the people of God from Puerto Rico that will view this service. They will watch it, if now, not now, a little bit later. But we thank God for these. We appreciate you, my own mother, Mother Mayo. God bless you. Uh, for being here but one of the things that we notice and we know we know it's true it's not a slap it's not a a, a negative thing to say but we're slow to change and so we use a lot of the uh styles and patterns that were established uh in the 1900s some of these were established before suffrage uh, when women uh generally regards to black white methodist catholic or, or pentecostal uh, didn't have the access to the pulpit or mm -hmm. the opportunities that men have had and while a lot of other organizations have uh, liberated the women in that respect and given them office even though we have provided office we provided office without equity in the truest context but yet uh our church is, is just kind of slow on those things and so we see some a little movement and we have some women pastors now and then people oh. are yet uh, working in various ways to try to find a way to ordain uh, these pastors or to ordain these ministers. Uh, there's a, it's a struggle for those that are pushing for it, but it is something we see activity and a discussion. But something we never hear talked about mm -hmm. is the prophet. Is the prophet. Lord we don't hear anything talked about this prophet, that prophet. Now, and there are people who have gone and operate in the prophetic, without a doubt, a lot of pastors operate in the prophetic, evangelists operate in the prophetic, missionaries, male and female, operate in the prophetic, but few have the courage to say, I am prophet Amos. I am prophet Jones and I'm an ordained elder. I'm a pastor in the church, God in Christ, but my gift work uh, when I come to run a service with you, when I come to do an evangelistic outreach, I'm, I'm not coming just as pastor or just as brother. It is evangelism, but I'm coming as a prophet. Absolutely. And uh, we don't see that happening. We, we don't see that change coming. And I have a few more prophets that I, I plan to have on in the, the next few series, uh, but at the same time, I'm having trouble finding uh, women. Uh, where, where are there, are there women prophets, or is that just a male phenomenon? Any one of you jump right in on that? Uh, some of the most prophetic people that I know are women, and I think the difficulty that we have specifically in the Church of God in Christ, as you stated so eloquently, Bishop, is that we have not historically taught on what it means to be a prophet or the prophetic itself, and the struggle that we uh, we have is that we are enamored with the prophetic right? Uh, but we're more enamored with the word of wisdom and word of knowledge gifts within, uh, operating within the church structure rather than the prophetic itself. And so uh, what happens is uh, we fear it in the respect of the way the early church feared it because they didn't want to, uh, or I believe our church, the Church of God in Christ, didn't want to uh, hang our hats on prophets being great uh, due to the fact that if somebody missed, uh, we didn't want to be responsible for it. And so, uh, okay. and also another historical issue that we've had in the Church of God in Christ, and you know, I'm, I'm that guy to address those hard issues, so y'all forgive me in advance, but another issue that we've had is the major individuals who were exceptionally prophetic within the Church of God in Christ also had an effeminacy to them uh, that was not attractive to uh, the national and international leadership of the church, even though those gifts were greatly used. And so uh, those things uh, have created an ire against the prophetic, I believe in the church of God in Christ and have created a situation where it's something that we accept, but we don't teach and touch. 
You know, what's interesting is I completely agree. Uh, it's just very interesting. That never happens. <laughs> I, I completely 100% agree. Uh, I think it's funny though, that um, even the effeminate portion uh, that a lot of, and we've been around in the Church of God in Christ for a long time. Um, and I haven't just been uh, like uh, Prophet Dre, we haven't been just like around the church. I've been in active ministry since I was 12 years old. So I was the kid that would be sitting in the corner and I would disappear while y'all was talking and you wouldn't realize I was sitting there. And so while they talking about and using all of these slang words for the gay preacher or the effeminate preacher who may not even be gay, um, you're also talking about how you hit one of the sisters yesterday. And like, it, it's just always so funny that this portion is acceptable, but that portion isn't. But I completely agree. I think that when it comes to uh, women in the prophetic, uh, some of the most prophetic people that I know are women. 85% uh, of our prophetic training classes are women. Um, whenever I go and have a prophetic conference, 85% uh, to 90 are women and they are the most sensitive to hearing from God and the most accurate. I do think that we have this problem with being enamored with the prophetic uh, and have been so focused on the gift and the uh, person who operates that we've gotten away from the fact that the prophetic is supposed to point us to Jesus. Uh, I also think that because of our structure and our culture, uh, the church is designed to make sure that the senior pastor is the end all to be all. Uh, and with the office of the prophet coming along, a lot of that stuff gets shaken up. And so a lot of times the voice of the prophet is shut down because they sometimes hear different, they see different, they operate different, and it can look like rebellion when the issue is that um, if you listen, you'll be able to hear the next step that we're supposed to go to. Uh, I've, I've heard oftentimes that um, well, the, the most popular voice or the only voice that you need to be following is uh, the voice of your senior leader. And I kind of differ with that because I can only see in part and hear in part. This is why I have prophets that are at my church and that are around me um, personally that I can go to and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, da 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 da, da or, or I present it to some of the prophetic voices in my church. And I said, this is what I feel like I wanna do. I need y'all to pray and see if the Lord says something. Right when pandemic hit, um, I felt like the Lord said, do not shut down. The church is supposed to be a sanctuary. Um, send the people home, but you keep going and make sure this building stays open. And we also have a food pantry and stuff like that. So we were giving out a lot of stuff, did not wanna shut that down. Uh, and so I called an hour long prayer and we prayed in the Holy Ghost, that's it. We prayed in the Holy Ghost for an hour. And then I asked them, what is the Lord saying? And I wrote all of it down. I put all of that together because we see in part and we hear in part. So I put the parts and the pieces together. So, oh, okay, this is how he wants us to do it. This is the way that we're gonna do it. And if we were able to get some teaching and training for senior leadership on how to structure how our prophetic works and how the prophetic should be working in the kingdom for the perfecting of the saints, we would see it as an asset versus uh, a weapon that we need to be silencing. So let me ask this question. How, how do you know you're called to be a prophet? <laughs> well, for me, uh, I had always known that I had something different. I, I understood the scriptures. There. My vantage point, my view on the scriptures was unique. I heard the Lord even when I was not saved you know, speaking to me, well, not audibly, but in my mind, I could hear, have these thoughts that were God. I know a lot of people, when they get up and they're laying hands and they're saying they hear the Lord saying, but actually right. God implants thoughts into our brains. Those thoughts are what we translate. That's another misconception about how people call themselves prophets. It's mm -hmm. really plants a thought, and then you speak that thought, not that you actually hear them audibly, but for me, those thoughts, I knew those weren't my thoughts. You know what I mean? Uh, the scripture says explicitly his thoughts are not our thoughts and our ways are not our ways. And so right. I'm a pretty smart dude, but I'm not that good. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> it, it, took, it took for me, and, and, and I grew up in a Kojic church and my father in the gospel, he loved my preaching. He pushed me as a young preacher, allowed me to evangelize. Uh, he took me with him. I was his riding partner when he was going to different locations. Uh, but uh, I, we never really talked on the prophetic. Uh, he would just say, preach son, study to show yourself. So I would study Timothy, study Paul, blah, blah, blah. And so I went to college. I went to college. I uh, went to Dr. Amos while I was at college. And then when I moved to a city called 
Elkhart, Indiana. He sent me to somebody there. And while I was there, I met his, uh, Pastor Kevin Adams. And while I was there, I met this individual by the name of Prophet Rico Butler. Uh, oh, yes. and for everybody who's watching uh, tonight, it takes a prophet to train the prophet. You can't have somebody who's just cool or who has a look. It really takes somebody who actually understands the prophetic, who has the ability to uh, see the prophetic and to understand each of the revelatory gifts as they are to really train you on the persona, the mentality, uh, the, the characteristics, the integrity, uh, and the movements of the prophet. Prophet Rico Butler took me under his wing uh, and really made me understand that I wasn't crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I had people who was like, oh, you radical. No, I'm not radical. I'm just honest. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a label that we give to people who are prophetic and who are different in their praise. Well, you're mm-hmm. radical. No, I am honest. I, this is who I am. This is not uh, some some uh, uh, misnomer or phenomenon. This is exactly who I am. And so he really helped me to understand my voice and understand how God was talking to me and why God was talking to me and and what I should do as I'm ministering. You know, I would, I, I, as a minister, I was evangelizing quite a bit before I was ordained. And so, uh, but, and people then would be like, oh man, you, you, you know the Lord, I hear the prophetic in your voice, you're a prophet, blah, blah, blah. And I never accepted the title uh, of being prophet until Rico Butler, who I esteemed as a prophet, uh, announced to his congregation and to those individuals who were seeking me out to minister that he is Prophet Dre. And so it took for that stamp of approval for me right. to myself uh, acknowledge and place that as, you know, people could call me Prophet. And so for me, that's how it transpired. Let me add this. Uh, you're speaking of uh, Prophet Rico Butler, who was a pastor in the first jurisdiction of Indiana. We all grew up in the first jurisdiction. I, I and Rico was in that jurisdiction for quite a while. And basically, as straight-laced and old-school Kojic as Indiana first jurisdiction is, Bishop Hall embraced two men who were prophets. Mm-hmm. Uh, he embraced Prophet awesome. Bobby Dawson. Awesome. And in awesome. fact, the presiding bishop, Bishop G.E. Patterson, was the first presiding bishop I ever heard publicly uh, acknowledge that office when in a national setting, he introduced prophet Bobby Dawson and allowed him uh, without hindrance to be accepted widely as prophet Bobby Dawson. Bishop Hall uh, utilized his gift, respected his anointing uh, as prophet Bobby Dawson and with prophet Rico Butler. Uh, it, It surprised everybody, here's a young man he was quiet. He, he didn't get into any trouble. He, he did, built up his church and he would minister and tear the house down and then bring his lines and do his work as a prophet. And the bishop would I acknowledge this is prophet Rico Butler. And uh, so no, prophet Butler is well known in the northern Indiana region and well respected. Uh, went to be with the Lord for me, which was an early time. But we thank God for what he has sown into us. And then how he uh, had the courage. I would call it courage because it wasn't a widely uh, acceptable route Mm -hmm. uh, to carry the title of prophet. But he did it and wore it uh, legitimately. And I will say wore it because he knew it was from God. How how about you, Prophet Ray? What was your Um, journey? Like uh, Prophet Dre, I, from the beginning of being able to consciously think, uh, I felt like the Lord was speaking to me. And it's so funny with not just with prophetic people, because I'm a believer in the fact that every believer should be prophetic. This is your father. He should speak to you. Um, But for prophets, it's almost as if our conversations never stop with the Lord. Um, Like I can be in prayer and praying for hours and hours and hours, which I used to do all through school (laughs) in high school and stuff to the point where my father would wake me up and like, uh, go and lay down. I'm like, no, no, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. I was like super deep. Y'all have no idea. Um, Part of that is because I had not had any training. I wasn't around any prophetic people. The only thing that I knew was traditional Kojic and I knew that the father was speaking something different to me uh, to operate and flow different. Uh, Speaking something different, not contrary to scripture or to our faith, 
but just in my operation and demonstration. Um, at about 12 years old, I got saved at nine, spirit filled at 12 on the mother Upshaw. Um, yep, it was a whole tarrying service and we was there for a good old week. Uh, I think I started speaking in tongues on Monday, but she told me Monday night, like the mothers tell you, you come back. Come on back, baby. Come on back. Come on back. And you got to get right. filled. I was yeah. confused as everybody else. Somebody in this ear yelling to, uh, you know, get glad for him. Somebody over here saying, cry out to him. Yeah. What am I glad or am I crying? Which you know, it, it right. was, it was, it was nuts. But on that Friday, boom, like we was on the floor, we was out and the power of God fell and like six of us got spirit filled. That night I was in my word and the Lord of course took me to Jeremiah and he spoke to me, look, I have called you as a prophet. Didn't really understand what that meant, but I wow. knew that it was something important. Uh, and from there, uh, my yes, oh my God. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, my yes was a serious yes. Now I went through a whole bunch of stuff growing up, but I never, it, I remember I was dating somebody. I was dating somebody I shouldn't have been dating and I knew it. And when we first met, I told them, my name is Jonah, like Jonah. I was like, my name is Ray, but I'm telling you, my name is Jonah. And so I'm running from this call. Um, so when the Lord speaks to me and tells me we have to break up, then I'm just telling you, that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> and, uh, we had dated for about four months. Uh, I walked into work. They were sitting at the counter or at a table and the Lord spoke to me and said, it's done. I walked right, right over and was like, yeah, God told me that it was done. So this will be our last conversation. Uh, and so that's kind of the way the Lord trained me. And then he connected me with people like, um, it's so weird that he, he trained me in specific uh, areas. Um, so I got into like the prophetic warfare, prophetic music um, with Dr. Uh, with Apostle Peter Nichols, who was one of the first female uh, pastors in Kojic, ordained under uh, Bishop, well, not necessarily ordained, but you know, um, right. under Bishop Brooks after her husband died. Um, and she just took over the church. Uh, and many of you know, she was uh, also one of the mentors for Dr. Juanita Bynum. Uh, so that was one of our first times in growing and learning in the prophetic, along with Mother Upshaw. And well, you know, see, what, let me add this and keep that thought. Most people don't know because that was a hush hush female pastor, and oh, yeah. the bishops were doing it, but they weren't advertising it. You they know, so there are a lot of people listening probably, and we'll listen later uh, when their time to listen comes. With, we didn't have female pastors in our jurisdiction. Oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And go ahead, brother. Had, she was incredible and she she trained us it was i don't know it was about eight of us and we were all under uh i don't know 20 and under and she trained us in intercession and in prayer and right. spiritual warfare and the prophetic no you don't say stuff like that no the only thing though is contrary to what most people believe she still had you know that traditional edge to them so mm. prophets were kind of mean <laughs> prophets were kind of harsh yeah you all are different we are different. Uh, our personalities are different. And one of the things that I can say now is, well, number one, let me answer the question. How do you know that you're a prophet? Number one, because God told me. That's number one. Number two, and I have this in one of my books, Shameless Plug, uh, and I mean shameless, but it is a huge plug. Um, one of my books called Behind Closed Doors, I talk about this, and I usually have people come up to me, and I'm sure uh, <laughs> Prophet Dre does too. People will come up and be like, oh, I'm a prophet too. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, no, you're not. But I'll ask, well, how do you know? And they're like, oh, I've got confirmation and this person prophesied it and this person said it and I will let them know, I'm sorry, you're not a prophet. Well, how can you say that? And they'll leave offended and I'll give them one of my books, hit read it. And you, you just talk to Jesus because one of the first ways is he has always called prophets himself. Second, according to Deuteronomy, the Bible says uh, that the prophets will come up from among you the ability for a prophetic voice to live in Detroit and then move to Florida. And now all of a sudden, oh, I'm a prophet. Now, wait a minute, you didn't come up from among us. So right, we can right. identify you as a prophet. We hear that you prophesy, but we can't say that you are a prophet. Um, those people who come up from among, who I've come up from among, from my parents, my brothers, my sisters, in school, everything. I used to be prophesying in school, like laying hands on people, slaying the saints in class, like did not care. We had a concert, somebody's leg was hurting. And I was like, get me my oil. Look, I, I had a briefcase. I'm gonna tell you, I, one of these days I'm gonna post my pictures. I had a briefcase, 
Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn, uh, uh, some anointing oil, my notebook, a Bible and a tambourine because you never knew when the praise was going to hit. And so I was always ready to lay hands, preach or praise. And so from <laughs> all the way back then until now, I have lived exactly the same way. My yes has always been yes since 12 years old. That's been 30 some odd years. As we talk about this, one of the saints, uh, Sister Hilda Williams, uh, who uh, is from the state of Mississippi, she states that one of the most powerful prophets that she can remember in her lifetime was Mother Scott, the wife of, of the recently deceased Bishop T.T. T. Scott of Mississippi. And, you know, I, I, I totally agree. There were some sainted women of God, evangelists. They went by the title of evangelist or missionary, but they were straight up prophets. Straight up prophets. They were. They were straight up prophets. Listen, but this is one of the things that I recognized. Yeah. Uh, as I was growing up, one of the things that my father continued to say, and this is something that the father told him, was that uh, do the work. Do the Just work. Just do the work. And so uh, growing up, they didn't call me prophet. Some right. of them called me, oh, young preacher, young prophet, young minister, but I knew who I was. And the only thing that I had to speak for me was my fruit. And so like Jesus said, if you don't believe what I say, look, look at what I do. And so a lot of times people have gotten stuck on the fact that they're not calling you prophet. It's fine. Get your missionary credentials. Go ahead and be an elder. That's right. fine. Do the work of the prophet. The work of the and prophet. your fruit will speak for itself. They'll call you what you show I do, them. I do want to chime in on one notion that was presented. And I think it's very imperative to understand is that prophets emerge and arise. They're not, they're not elected. They're not selected, they emerge, <laughs> and they're not ordained. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I can't stand these guys and these weak reformations and these so-called emerging. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who try to ordain people prophets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The prophets arise. Only yeah. God does this. You know what I'm saying? It's the one office. Mm -hmm. Only God emerges. He's the, he, he he brings that individual like he brought Jeremiah, like he brought Isaiah, like he brought Ezekiel. We can go down the list. They come through and out of nowhere. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I am I'm an individual uh who is a first generation preacher. I have no lineage. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My lineage is Dre, Jesus than God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's, That's pretty not, good one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I don't I don't come from a preaching background. And I'm, this is not a, a, an attack or, or a diss to anybody because it, it can happen that way as well. But for me, it couldn't have been anybody but God that did this and give me this gift because I don't I don't have a, my dad wasn't a preacher. My grandfather wasn't a preacher. My great grandfather wasn't a preacher. I don't have any uncles or cousins that were preachers. I, I was just in church. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord anointed me. He, you, he pulled me to this. Uh, and again, I think it was something that happened from the time I was small. But I'm, I'm so I'm so frustrated in, in this respect with these people trying to give people a credential prophet or an ordination as a prophet when okay. people teach them how to become a prophet when yep. they have not been chosen for this. You know what I'm saying? And that's right. dangerous. And I think that's one of the items that the Church of God in Christ is also leery of is that people announcing themselves as prophets. Oh, yeah. Or, or, or going to a prophetic school or to, and that, again, this is not a diss to that because we need the school of the prophets. To training. Mm -hmm. the prophets. You know what I'm saying? And so those prophetic movements that are validated and that are assisting prophets in understanding themselves, particularly in arenas where they had no, no tutelage or no mentorship are, is dire. But mm -hmm. there are a lot of cats that just announce they are prophet and expect somebody to give them a certificate. And I think that's another thing that the Church of God in Christ is afraid of putting their stamp of approval on is individuals just like it's a lot of people that I'm called to preach and they can't get my, uh, what you call it, say, this thing right here, say, you know what I'm saying? They can't, they, you, know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think, and we have a lot of that, but because they pay their money, you know what I'm saying? People get pay to keep, the report, yeah. Yeah, they get to keep them credentials, but mm -hmm. you know, they can't preach their way, you know, they ain't, they can't even tell you three scriptures about Jesus good, but but they elders, you know what I'm saying? Or they become pastors. No you know real I mean? proof of their ministry. Yeah. The prophetic, if you're going to be a prophet, there has to be demonstration. And, and I'm not going to go to you're right. the historicity of my own demonstration, but I, I, I'm grateful that my bishop has seen the demonstration of my prophetic ministry. Absolutely. You know absolutely. 
and and there are countless others across the country who have seen that demonstration. Uh, and I and, and I want to say this too, and I'm hoping uh, Prophet Ray agrees with this. I think there's a great misconception on the prophetic and what prophecy is. Uh, we lied to the body of Christ to give humanity an exit strategy from false prophecy. Oh yeah. Lord, wow. And, uh, wait, 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 we lied to humanity. We lied to humanity to give us as humans an, an exit, exit strategy, strategy. to false prophecy. Yeah. And what we've done is we've said prophecy is conditional. And I apologize, and for anybody that's watching there, maybe everybody doesn't agree with my, my systematic theology, but hold on, honey, I'm on a thing, hold on. Uh, my systematic theology, but prophecy itself is not conditional. When the Lord speaks that an event shall occur, it shall occur. It shall occur. He puts the thought into the mind of a prophet that this is going to be an event that transpires. He is giving a glimpse into the future to the prophet now, and I know somebody's going to say, well, what about Hezekiah? Hezekiah was a unique situation and a blip in the radar of what it meant for the prophetic to hit the earth. So we can't use that as the example. That is the exception. Okay. Really, Hezekiah received a word of wisdom uh, that translated into a prophetic moment. But that's another matter for another day. What I want you to realize is yeah. prophecy <laughs> cannot be changed. It cannot be changed. And I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I so let me ask you this. Yes, okay. sir, Pastor. Uh, I, I don't necessarily disagree. I think that um, because of the way that the church has been conditioned uh, on what the prophetic is, then um, the conditions of the prophetic then start to come up so that we can say, oh, then, you know, that didn't happen because you didn't have enough faith and so on and so forth. I don't mm -hmm. believe God is stupid. Um, no, no. I think it's very brilliant. So when he gives me a condition, I know because he gives me conditional words, uh, follow, follow my track here. And mm -hmm. so if he gives me a conditional word, the Lord will say, I want to do this. I want to do that. As you do this, just like he told the children of Israel, you return it to me, I'll return it to you. And this is what I'll do. I'll restore your land. I'll still do this. I'll do this. But the condition was, if you do this, the whole is the prophetic. This is what's going to happen. The condition is, if you do this, remember he said, come, let us reason together. Um, and that that literal translation is, let's drop a contract that's mutual between the two of us. And so if you do this, I will do that. The problem that we see, that I believe that we see right now is that our definition of the prophetic mm -hmm. is so broad. Um, like you said, uh, like with Hezekiah, you got a word of knowledge uh, and a word of wisdom and everybody's like, oh, he prophesied to me, no. He, he just gave you some information and told you how to get something done. Now, does that fall under the umbrella of the prophetic? Yes. But when God says tomorrow, when you wake up, there's 30 of you right now that are going to sell $20 and you're going to wake up with money in your... God, I like those old school prophets <laughs> who without condition, they would just say uh, tomorrow about this time. <laughs> about, about this time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen. Right, right. But what we see is exactly what you said. A lot of people who Condition. operate a lot in uh, the word of wisdom and what we don't even realize, let me tell you. <laughs> Maybe they don't even know what they're calling it. They, they have no idea that, that because be most the of the time they're not operating in the word of wisdom. They're right. operating in spiritualism. They're operating in mysticism and not the good kind of mysticism either. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're being strange for no reason. The Lord told me once, because I used to operate heavy in the word of knowledge. And uh, he said, how is that beneficial? And how is that leading them to me? I mean, prophesying addresses, phone numbers, last four digits of your social, what you had on uh -oh. yesterday, where you were going. And now the that's the prophecy that'll fill a house, but keep on oh, talking. Oh, oh yeah. People it, show it, for that. And then you start prophesying the three C's, you, you know, cash, cars, and cribs. Then every, <laughs> listen, one, <laughs> of the, one of the things that I teach in our PAT training courses is about discerning words, uh, being able to judge the word of the Lord. And one of the things is it's got to be scripture based. Um, you've got to know when it's coming from somebody's soul realm, when it's coming from just their emotions. In addition to that, you've got to be able to discern prophetic manipulation and psychology. What do I mean by that? When you get into services and you know praise and worship was great and that prophetic or that prophet gets up or that minister gets up and they start flowing prophetically, but then the anointing lifts and they start prophesying to random people and they don't have the grace to operate in that manner, they're going to go either to your money, they're going to go to your family, and they're going to go to, uh, I don't know, like jobs and stuff. 
Those are the three things because we know that's going to cause an emotional response. Listen, I'm not after your emotions. I'm after you being driven back to right relationship with God. And so we see that all the time on a lot of networks um, that are supposed to be delivering the word and those two together. And you'll see a lot of that. And we have been perpetrating that and not just them, but we have seen that in the church of God in Christ a lot. And it sickens me because if you go back to our black book, our little black book uh, promotes the prophetic, um, talks about how even Bishop C.H. Mason was a prophet and all of this stuff, but the foundation of scripture, like Prophet Dre said, they couldn't get nothing saved. The, the fly that they just killed, they couldn't bring it back to life and got no power, no demonstration, no nothing. And it sickens me. Look, I, I, uh -oh. I, I, wanna, I wanna chime in just on one point there. Uh, you know, one of the great struggles that we fight up against is individuals thinking that they have something when they actually do not. And people lying to these dudes uh, and giving them validation because they want their hero worship. There we go. My, my notion is how in the world is that when you prophesy, everything that you say is positive. Everything that you say is money. Everything that you say is a breakthrough. I apologize. I, and you can ask anybody who's ever been in a service with me. Uh, I prophesied sickness that was coming to people's bodies. I've prophesied accidents and bad issues that have come to people's lives. And, and, and it's because the prophetic is to foretell. Come on. Foretell the mind of God. Yep. Not to make you emotional, to make you want to be in, engendered or in, endeared to me. Mm -hmm. that, and that's what we've done with the prophetic in this century as we've made the prophetic a flirtation tool to people's spirits so that they will be endeared to one. And, and that's not what it's for. So I, real I, prophecy I, is not I, on the, I, real prophecy is not on the entertainment circuit. It's nope. not. It's not. It's, it's not there just to fill the house and, and dazzle as, as Prophet Ray was saying, call the, the house number. My former pastor used to say, you got excited because somebody told you what color your house was. He said, didn't you know what color your house was? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why are you getting excited about that? <laughs> oh, they call the color of the house. Well, uh, let's let's do some retrospect real quick. Uh, we all are old Kojic. We've been here a long time. Uh, and we haven't been here long enough to be in the way. As the old saints, I've been in this way a long time. We ain't been in the way, but we've been here a long time. And retrospectively, one of the things that I heard that would dismiss prophets as an office was that John was the end of the prophets. When mm -hmm. Jesus made a comment just before he asked his disciples, who the men say that I am? And some said, John, he said, well, John, was, he was a great prophet, but he was the end of the prophets. They used that statement to say that there were no more prophets necessary because all of the prophets were prophesying that Jesus would come, were prophesying the Messiah. So that now the Messiah has come, uh, there's no room for a prophet. Uh, comment on that. Well, Bishop, uh, then the apostles and Luke who wrote the epistle or wrote the acts of the apostles must have been lying because he called uh, Silas a prophet, right? Uh, and so then if that's the case, if Silas was a prophet and that was after uh, Christ was gone and the apostle and the apostolic age raised, then somebody lying, somebody lying. Paul spoke to the uh, offices that were necessary to build the foundation of the church and he said it's the apostles and the prophets so then somebody lying and now is he the apostle paul and saint Luke, put that in there uh -huh. or 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 these people who keep saying that it's over somebody lying and I, and I don't think that uh apostle paul and luke would have written things and lies when they life, they actual life was on the line about what they were writing and preaching. I just don't believe it. Some of these dudes, they got money and influence on the line. And so that's why they're saying these things. My supervisor, um, let me, brother Ray, please hold that. Don't, don't forget it. Yeah, he, I like brother Ray, he writes stuff down so he ain't gonna forget his, he know what he's about to say. <laughs> My supervisor, I wanna get her statement. And she says, everyone that has prophesied to me it's been a word of wisdom and knowledge and not a real prophecy. I'm not moved by emotions and I'm not going to give you my money because you done struck a deal with the pastor that you'll raise X amount of money and the prophets will get half of it. 
that's true. No, that's, that's really true. I've been in the back rooms. I'm telling you, I have actually gone to churches and they're like, I need you to hit on these things. I say, yeah, I don't operate like that. I'm sorry. Oh, well, um, uh, this is something that we're struggling with. I don't, I don't, if you don't mind, I'm gonna need you to step out because I don't want to be influenced by what you need me to do because then it's not prophetic. I know it. Right. I know it. This ain't prophetic. This is something that I know. Now, can I teach on it? Sure. But, but isn't that biblical, Prophet Ray? Then uh, in the Old Testament, they would send for the prophet uh, for a purpose. I want you to bless. I'm, I'm calling for you to bless, bless my nation. It didn't work out that well for him. It sure but, didn't. <laughs> but he said, I'm calling work. for you for this. Another would say, uh, call the prophet and ask him, should we go to battle? Or, so is, is that wrong? Now, that's. I think that's a different uh, concept. I do believe that the prophet carries the answer. We carry the word of the Lord and the, uh, who is it? Andre Crouch said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. So when we're playing like uh, little um, games at home and stuff, and I don't know the answer, I'll always say Jesus because Jesus is the answer. And it's always <laughs> the right answer. Um, but when people, I teach that when people come like to me, oh, I, like I have had I like people that. come to me uh, from around the world uh, like uh prophet dre and they're like well i'm about to buy this building what is the word of the lord should okay. i buy this building okay. and just like david went and was like lord should we pursue should pursue. we do this mm -hmm. um i think that it is important uh to understand the voice of the prophet we're not god but we have an insight and opening to different areas and different realms. So for you to beckon them and say, hey, I need a word from the Lord. When we do our trainings, there have been times when I said, listen, I need y'all to hear the Lord regarding somebody's relationship. We're only prophesying about relationships right now. And they're like, oh, well, how do we do that? The same faith that you use to prophesy about cash, money, and cars, I need you to be holistic in that. Yes, and your ability yes, yes. to hear yes. from God is not just about what you want. It is about what God wants. And then, uh, can Please I say, go ahead. Yes. But you're um, no more prophets. Um, then that would mean then the same scripture that there are no pastors, there are no evangelists, there are no teachers, because all five of them were mentioned the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist for the perfecting of the church. So if we're eliminating one or two of them, we're eliminating all of them. And then, um, Prophet Dre started talking about how if everything that you prophesy is good, then we have a problem. I completely agree. One of the things that I discovered in scripture is even um, when things are horrible and the Lord's saying, I am going to destroy you. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to rain down hellfire. You're going to be in bondage for years. Da, 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 da. He always offered hope. And so even That's when right. I do a prophetic word for correction or redirection, um, God offers that way out. He provides a way for escape. And so oftentimes people just come with this prophetic, God said he's sending judgment and then boom, that's it. Okay, so what do I do? Do I repent? Do I? But even with Nineveh, he said, look, repent. This is what's going to happen in three days. Here's something that happened for us. In October of 2019, the Lord spoke to me in a dream, and he said that there was going to be a virus sent from China that was going to come from China. It was going to be reported that it would come from China, uh, that it would do damage, but it wouldn't wipe us out. And I was like, oh, okay. And I got up at my church and I prophesied that. And I said, now, listen, this is what you need to do. You need to go get you some toilet paper, stock up on stuff, blah, 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 blah. That was October of 2019. Pandemic wow. hit. Um, in January, mind you, we were still having service. January, right. I think it was January or February. The Lord stopped me in the middle of service and told me to prophesy. And he said that uh, death was going to come to leadership, to major leadership. And don't be afraid when he snatches them out. After they started dying, he started saying it was coming again. And I was like, what? And then he said that it would, and people are going to be offended by this, but I'm okay with that. You can inbox me or email me, uh, prayshipman at gmail.com. Um, but he said, like Pharaoh, I'm going to cause my judgment to come. And I was like, what? He said, often we think that judgment is like uh, negative and bad and he's going to smite. of God, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But judgment also is if you've ever been to court for a ticket or been arrested and the judge says, case dismissed, that is that's the judgment, judgment of God. Yeah, and what we judgment. see and understand is, and please, I know that people are going to get offended by it, but it's okay. Um, because if you know your culture and your history, you know what I'm about to say is truth. There have been times where some of our senior leaders who have gone before us have held back some of the younger people because they were too uh, dramatic or radical or whatever word they want to use, and they couldn't necessarily control them. So they've been held back literally 
all of those people have been taken away. Now, I believe even in God's grace and mercy, because death mm. is not necessarily the worst thing for the believer. Sure. It is something we should celebrate. So even in that, we see the mercy of God. And so I said that because we were talking about the um, people prophesying always the positive stuff. It's not always positive stuff because we live life and God gives warning and he lets us know, hey, this is about to come around the bend. Keep going this way. This is what's going to happen. And people are like, oh, I rebuke that. Do y'all remember when Mother uh, Shaw, Mother Shaw got up at convocation and said, uh, she was talking about the death angel. The death angel was coming. It was coming. It was coming. And they was like, oh, no, I, it's recorded. It's, it's on YouTube. Uh, oh, we rebuke the spirit of death. She said, rebuke if you may, but death is coming. Before the next convocation, she had died. She had packed up all her stuff, uh, put her last bag in there. She died. Uh, one sure. of the bishops died. Yeah. It just people just started dropping. That's it was right. all That's major. Right. You are right. Yeah. But it was warning for us to be in preparation for what was to come. What we don't do with the prophetic is follow the instructions. <laughs> That's our Absolutely. problem. Well, let me ask you this. One of my uh, one of the saints says, "What happens when you're still waiting on your prophecy to come true?" Was this considered a false prophet if you wait a long time? Or how long should a person wait? So, uh, you know, I want, I want to deal with this in this fashion because, again, my notion is when the Lord says it, it has to come to pass. Mm -hmm. So because the Lord, I don't care what people do, God knows every future event. You know what I'm saying? And so... We have to we have to we have to differentiate between a word of wisdom that takes us to a prophetic moment or when a prophecy is coming forward. We have to right. we have to differentiate between that uh, because the word of wisdom will give us instruction about things, where we're supposed to go, how we're supposed to do, blah, 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 blah. And if we don't do this and we don't do that, then this is what's going to transpire. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the word of wisdom taking us to a prophetic moment. And so uh, so the notion that we have to consider whether a prophecy is true or not is number one, is it a real prophecy? Was it a this date, this date, that date prophecy? Mm -hmm. Or was it a word of wisdom where you were given instruction on what you were supposed to take care of so that the prophetic moment could transpire? So, so if it was a word of wisdom that gave you instruction on how to get to a prophetic moment and you have not followed the instruction, then you are causing yourself to wait. But if by chance you follow the instruction and ain't nothing happened, then you need to knock on his door and say, what happened, homeboy? What you said ain't came to pass. And you know what? I think, too, people are impatient. They don't understand. I know, right? They don't understand the uh, patience of God because he is eternal. And because we are so carnal, we think in times of hours and minutes and, and weeks and months. But you know, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, a thousand years as a day. So when God says it's going to happen, and we go, happen. okay, great. Now we're looking <laughs> up. Okay, Lord, you, Lord, you said it. Are you watching the clock, Lord? You know what you promised. <laughs> Joseph, right, the God of all time. Right. Joseph watching? had a dream. Joseph had a dream when he was a teenager. Yeah, yeah. He was a full-grown man with kids, and and enslaved and he looked different. Wasn't even the same person that he was when his thing right. transpired. So we got to we we can't put ourselves in the moment of, like you said, Pop, counting the moments, but we do have to put ourselves in line. That's Joseph right. stayed in line. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What we understand about Joseph's life, he did not lose his integrity in the midst of waiting for mourning. I felt the Holy Ghost there. You oh, got to yes. that you can't put yourself in a day where God speaks to you and in the middle of the night, you can't fall You're waiting preaching. For You're preaching good, man. So it's 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 our God, it's our duty to put ourselves in the next season, the time in between our prophecy and its fulfillment. You have to make sure that you maintain your integrity and trust that the Lord trust will cause joy to come yeah. in the morning. And so I'm uh, sorry. That's <laughs> all right. Well, you know, uh, Help, prophet, that. please. Uh, let me let me just add, add this little tidbit because he. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start to ham an organ real soon. Right. <laughs> you got some click tracks. Let me download. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
So <laughs> how long should you wait on a prophetic word? I just have this uh, two things really quickly. I remember I was maybe 16 or 17. Um, I was still uh, working in ministry uh, and I was sneaking out going to uh, the bar. And so I was coming in drunk. Some of y'all- Excuse me, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, maybe I- No, you heard that right. Come on here. Oh, the, the prophet was thinking about going to a bar? Oh, the prophet was at the bar. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, mama. The prophet was at the bar. And let me tell you how frustrating God gets because I remember being at the bar. I was feeling real good. I was drinking at that point gin and tonic uh, because my godfather told me that if you drink tonic water, you won't have a hangover the next day. And so oh, okay. I was just, I was feeling myself. I was chilling and I was laughing and joking. And okay. this girl sat over here and this girl sat over there. I was there with my best friend and we were laughing and joking. And the Lord started to speak to me about her. And I was like, oh, crap, okay. Ma'am, I got to tell you da -da 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 -da, about something about her husband and she needed to leave. She burst into tears and she's like, oh my God, okay, I have to go. And so that was supposed to be my best friend's date. <laughs> and so that was all messed up. Mm -hmm. Turned over, prophesied to the next girl uh, and she's all bawling and she's all in tears and all upset. And now I'm not buzzed anymore. And now I have to spend 80 more dollars in order to uh, get drunk. So it was so very frustrating. <laughs> but around that time, I came to service. Our building Building was turned the other way and there was a lady uh prophet angel smith i will never forget this woman she came in and she prophesied i came in late towards the end of service and i walked in my hair was a little shorter than this it was multiple colors i was i think i might have had a piercing or two um and she said i don't know who this young man is you know when you got you gotta have your prophetic voice you know she said i don't know who this young man is but i need you to stand up and i was like great i can barely walk right now because I had to turn up again. Mm -hmm. And so as I started walking forward, she says, though there is sin on you, God's called you as a prophet and you will write books and you will travel and God will use you like he does my friend wow. Jones to communicate to different um, generations um, and give you the tongue of the learned to be able to communicate on levels that you did not learn. Now, at that time, my in my mind, I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> I wanted to be an actor. And so I was like, girl, I'm not writing no books. I'm not doing nothing. I'll keep preaching and stuff, but I'm not writing no books. Listen, I have plenty of books on Amazon. I have like three books that I'm writing right now. Um, how long should you wait? That was, I don't know, over 30 years or 20 years. Wow. So All this right. is a lot. In addition to that, when you're talking about waiting on the Lord, and this is one of my favorite stories uh, about the day of Pentecost. Um, and the Bible says that uh, Jesus told them to go and tarry or to wait. But when you start really studying that, the Bible talks about how they were up there waiting and they were serving the Lord, um, tarrying as uh, an act or an art that we used to do. I don't necessarily believe in, but I believe in the principle. The principle of tarrying taught us that it's not about your distractions. It's about your press. It's not about necessarily uh, what you have to say right now. It's about you focusing on him and all of everything that you need. You're giving it up to him. You're receiving from him, all of that stuff. And so in our Terry and in our press, we're still doing something. Um, just like Prophet Dre said, that if you have a word from the Lord, trust, it is going to come to pass. The issue, though, is where are you? <laughs> where are you? If God said that this is what you're supposed to do and that, that you're going to do, are you still sitting at home waiting for it to just hit you? No, you show me your faith by works, I'll show you my works by faith. You've got to be able to do something. So in your waiting, keep working and waiting. Well, let me add this, and I think that is a, a very good commentary on it. Remember Abraham, and when the Lord spoke to Abraham and told Abraham what was going to happen, said, hey, I'm going to raise up a great nation, your children, they're going to be like the sands and the stars, it's going to be so many you can't count. Uh, you're going to be a blessed nation, I'm going to bless you, everybody's going to call you blessed, but oh, by the way, it won't happen for 400 years. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, by the way, you won't live to see it. <laughs> right. But the word of God, the promise of God is always sure. So retrospect, as we summarize on this portion, is when we look back and we recognize the church never really fully embraced prophets. It was a uh, late in the day uh, acceptance, although we understand, I, I think you are quite accurate, both of you, in the utilization of the scripture where prophets were included in the New Testament church, uh, although excluded by some. So I have this question for you, prophet. 
Ray, Prophet Dre, Prophet Ray Dre, Prophet Dre Ray. Uh, I, I, the, <laughs> the question I have is what happened to the school of the prophets? Biblically, in the, in the Old Testament, there were always schools of prophets. And if you were a prophet, you had to be a prophet after a school, after an order, after a group. You were never just an, a single prophet out there uh, or a unique prophet that were off on your own. You belonged to somebody. Now, so, listen. Let's elucidate I, on that, if you will. I have no idea what happened to the school of the prophets. Um, one of the things that I, so I am a part of the Sears House, the Holy Order of Prophets. Uh, the apostle is Cedric Wright II. His birthday was just yesterday. Um, and so, and I am a dean in there. So what I do is a lot of the teaching and the training. I have my own school. Um, and I think part of the issue that we have seen culturally, not just in the Church of God in Christ, but culturally as a whole, is that uh, we don't want to lose control and power over those people. When people start getting information, they start realizing how some of the things that I have been taught, I don't necessarily have to do. Um, so like the senior pastor is not the all to end all. Um, somebody asked me, well, why don't you get certifications or a release letter from some of your students to go through your prophetic class? Well, number one, I trust the prophetic class and I trust the teachers. I trust the lessons that they're teaching. And part of what we teach is how you need to be submitted and committed to your local ministry. And you're so prophetic so that you can be an asset to the ministry, not so that you can lord over them. So this is part of the reason. The other reason is because I know that there are certain pastors that will say, oh, no, absolutely. I actually had a girl who signed up. She paid her money and she came to the first class. Her pastor found out that she was going and said, oh, no, you're not ready. Well, when is she ever going to get ready to learn? Right? <laughs> that kind of stuff never makes any sense to me. So and that that's and they if if they gave the teaching and the school a chance, then you would understand. And I think that uh, we're moving slowly. But the Church of God in Christ is doing a lot of things that are um, praiseworthy. They, I, I noticed that we set up a, um, a deliverance um, imposing, a symposium, and they're trying to get some education on doing deliverance and how to do deliverance. Right. And hopefully, the next thing is going to be the prophetic, because it's necessary. And I'm not just talking about um, the... Uh, you know, God said he's going to turn it around. No, I'm talking about the real heartbeat and the mind of God, migrating from God to the heart and the mind of man so that we can communicate what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. The school, I think, was partly eliminated because we did not want to lose control over our people. And I think that's usually what happens because, as you said earlier, pastors have... Uh, sort of become the end all of all of the spiritual work and all of the spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. And because of that, if I have a member that I wants to go on to the school of the prophets, uh, well, how do I control that? Right. How, how do I monitor their gift? How, how do I measure their gift? I heard one pastor say, I'm their prophet. They don't need to go to another prophet. I'm their prophet. I'm thinking mm -hmm. you ain't doing that good of a job. They need more than what you have to offer. But that is what <laughs> I know, right? That is what happens. Uh, but let me ask you this, and then we're going to take a break. Pastor Shipman, uh, Prophet Ray, you, since you mentioned your, your training program, have you ever had to flunk anybody? Yes. Have you ever had to tell somebody, baby, this is not for you? Yes. Actually, let me give you two scenarios. One, a lady came in and she said, well, uh, I've, I've, I was ordained which was, I was like, oh, you were ordained a prophet. She was like three months ago, but I've been in the prophetic all of my life and I'm just trying to learn some stuff. Now, I, just dissecting that whole sentence, you've been in the prophetic all of your life, you were just ordained three months ago and you're just trying to learn some stuff. And so she didn't wanna take the foundations class, she wanted to jump right to advance. Well, our foundations, intermediate and advanced classes build on top of each other. The foundation gives you all the scriptures, all the activations, the intermediate speaks about your heart, the heart of the prophetic person, getting you together before you can deliver any word. And the advance speaks to how you operate in these streets and in the church, submitted to leadership. 
So we got it set up so that it's done like that. And she was like, well, I, I just think that I should. And I said, well, maybe this isn't the thing for you. We'll go ahead and refund you your money before the conversation was done. I had sent it to her and hung up. No shame, no hurt, no foul. The other thing, and my mom is going to be mad about this. Um, my mom has been operating in the prophetic for hundreds of years. She's not that old, y'all. Careful now. Uh, you know, you're, they're on the line. You do yes. know that, right? Okay. <laughs> yes. Right. But one of the things that we do in our uh, prophetic training class is we try to stretch your faith. And so how you've always operated in the prophetic and how you've always tried to hear from the Lord, we try to pull you outside of that box. Um, and so one of the exercises that we use is how God speaks to you through anything, through any music, any television show. If you've ever been watching a television show and something just kind of hits you and I'm, listen to that thing because God may be trying to speak to you. And so my mom went through our foundations class, her and like two other people, um, and we had to fail them. Now the class is designed to pass. All you got to do is do the uh, activations and the homework, and it's very easy. You, you learn a failed. Lot. Your, I failed my mother. mother. Yes. Failed. And now mother. the it wasn't just up to me; it was up to the teachers. The problem was, <laughs> it's not that she wasn't operating prophetically. It's not that we, she wasn't hearing correctly. She was hearing the same way, and so there was no growth. Now here is the thing: I am also my mother's pastor it then becomes my job. No, ma'am, I need you to, the Bible says we grow from faith to faith and from glory to glory. You've been operating on this level of faith and glory for way too long. Let's go to the next level. And we push her and she's in her intermediate now and she is loving it. It's really about learning how to grow. Any preacher, the Lord spoke to me two years ago and said, you've been prophesying like this for too long. You've been on the same level for too long. You've been preaching like this. This is how you operate. It's good. You're comfortable and it's effective, but I need you to be more effective. So this level of faith, you got to go up. So that that's really, look, we got to go up. <laughs> Brother Dre, I appreciate that. Uh, you, any comment on that section as we finish up on retrospect and inspect? I, I completely agree that the school of the prophets, they disappeared as the New Testament began to translate into fruition. Uh, and as the apostles began to rise, something happened. Uh, I believe it was the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin that killed the school of the prophets because they wanted control uh, of what the church was saying. You know what I mean? And with the prophets ineffective, uh, it would uh, inhibit the Sanhedrin as, and the Pharisees from being able to control the message that was being translated to the body, uh, to the Israelites, to the world. And so I believe that in that time of transition, uh, that's what happened to. This is not. This is not fact. Now I, I can't prove it. I right. That, I don't have any evidence. Uh, yeah, but that's my belief that the, that happened in that time. And so, uh, I, I am not in disagreement with the ideology that the school of the prophets is necessary. Um, I do believe that there needs to be a school of the prophets that's not that's centralized, but that does not. Uh, adhere to agendas um, because what transpires is uh, individuals can create an agenda behind any school of thought. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? And the, the, to me, the Judiciary Committee for the Church, the Church of God in Christ, the Judiciary, Judiciary Board should be the auspices of the School of the Prophets. You that is you? good. I'm sorry. That should be the place to where the School of the Prophets develops and I got you. When things are transpiring in the church, the school of the prophets, the judiciary board should have an answer from God in unison. You see what I'm saying? And so that's just Dre, though. That's just Dre. I, oh, that's I, good I, stuff. God and Bishop, but I ain't finna send it to you. I'm not gonna take it. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you know what? You know what? I am I am that type of person, and I think Prophet Dre is too. <laughs> I will come up with a whole curriculum, send it to him, and be like, listen, you might want to train a judiciary board so that they can hear like Solomon when it comes to stuff like this, because this is something that we need. You don't want to do it? That's fine. I'll build my own. And honestly, this is why Pat came along, because I saw a need, and I suggested it to a couple of people. They did not want to do it, and so I started doing it. This is the interesting part, that a lot of the people that come through as they go through foundations, they have to be re-indoctrinated because they always feel like there's an agenda. Oh, we want to follow you. We No, 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 no. You, you're not trying to follow me. You're trying to learn so that you can take what you learn from me, take it right back to your pastor, 
<laughs> I want you to try and implement this at your church. And even if they don't implement it, you still have a job to do in that house. Sometimes you'll hear people say, well, we don't have any prophetic voices in our church, so I think I need to leave. What? No, that's why you're there, because there are no prophetic people. The prophet is the one who speaks water into the desert. Are you kidding me? Stay your tail right there and do what he's called you to do. You can learn somewhere else. Some people go away to school. He's got his MD. I'm working on my master's. Like, look, right. you, you got to figure out where you need to go to learn to bring that back home so you can disseminate it out to everybody else like uh, Bishop Amos, who is now, what is your official title for the Church of God in Christ? Uh, the Chairman, Commissioner of Kojic Health. The Commissioner of Kojic Health learned information there secularly and now brings it back home. That's right. what the prophetic school should be about. Well, thank you. Listen, uh, these, these are good. We're not through. We have one uh, last sector to discuss, and this has been a great discussion, and good things are happening. I want you to take a moment and uh, just relax and uh, meditate on these things that we've heard. It's offering time in the Church of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Let the church say yes. Oh, say yes. yes to that. I just need everybody, every one of you who comes through and listens to this program, I simply ask a $5 gift. If you're at all able, if every listener would offer $5. Now, if you're minded to do more, please do more. We know that you support a lot of programming in a lot of areas. You support your local church and your local ministries, and these things ought you to do. But if this program is blessing you, please feel free to give liberally. But at minimum, if everyone would present uh, just $5, we ask you to uh, offer that gift at this time. The giving instructions are listed. You may give to the Givelify app and give to Old Landmark Kojic by way of the cash tag, dollar sign, Old Landmark, all one word, dollar sign, Old Landmark. Or if you are a check writer, uh, you certainly can mail uh, to Old Landmark Kojic, P.O. Box 12641. Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46864. And those giving instructions are pinned in the commentary section. Amen. We appreciate each of you. Let's take a moment and make our gift and give your gift to the Lord. Amen. Everybody try to give something. Thank you, Sister Johnson. Amen. As you give as our tradition, thank you, Sister Stroud. Put a note in there that says, I gave. Let me know I'm not out here by myself. Send the pastor a note. Send the bishop a note. Bishop, I gave. Hallelujah. Thank you. Everyone can do this. People are asking about your school prophet. We're going to have to give an opportunity to share information about that. Amen. How are you doing? We appreciate all of your comments. Everyone, are you giving your gifts? Old Landmark, friends of Old Landmark. Now listen, whenever you hear this time in the service, whenever you hear this portion, give. Would you please, wherever you are, whenever you give, uh, whatever day, if it's next week, next month, we would still like for you to give because this is how you bless. People talk about plant a seed, plant a seed, plant a seed, plant a seed. All our life we've been planting seeds, so it's time for something to grow, don't you agree? Hello. Amen. We ought to have trees of wealth, trees of knowledge, trees of power uh, after decades of sowing. But I ask you to give liberally and watch God bless. But if you can, at least the $5. Lord, bless. We've crossed over a thousand followers. Amen. And if our thousand followers would just give $5, it would be a blessing to the work of the ministry. We appreciate each one of you and the things that you are doing. This is going well, and I thank you. The commentary is wonderful. Uh, thank you, Sister and Mother uh, Supervisor Inga Rowan. Amen. A friend of the Shipman's, friend of the Amos's, and knows Brother Dre. Amen. So we thank God for the Rowans. Uh, the Rowans and I, we worship together in Fort Wayne under Bishop uh, J.T. Dupree. Of the uh, Rowans. Yes. He said, he love the Rowans. You know the Rowans? We all love the Rowans. <laughs> love the Rowans. He is yeah. an incredible teacher. He is yes. great, isn't he? In, awesome. I, he sat and taught like for a men's class once, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he is incredible. 
Yes, Sylvester is. Rowan is incredible as Always. well as a lovely wife. Yes. So thank you, givers, and you please continue to giving. We ask because it's necessary, and we ask because you know there's a blessing in giving. The people who listen to this service are church folks, so we don't have to wine you and dine you and pump you and drunk drunk you up with the spirit and make you shake, turn around three times, shake somebody by the hands. Amen. No, you just give. Just, just give, all right? And we thank God for you. Now, we were talking about prophets, and someone mentioned uh, prophet, uh, Pastor uh, Nathan uh, Simmons. Simmons, amen, who moves strongly in the prophetic, and he had a tremendous gift. Uh, one of the things that I say about all of you prophets, and I could be mistaken, perhaps it's, it's a generalization, but y'all seem to be kind of impatient, and you get aggravated by people who say they're moving in the prophetic and you sitting in the surface and you're going, oh God. Oh, God. <laughs> I, did I get you right? Did I get you right? Did I get you right? Yes, go back. You know, walking uh, down my street. We were in a service, my <laughs> wife and I, and then I'm gonna let you all talk about what the church should expect from prophets. What should we look for from prophets? That's be our next area of discussion, the expectation. But my wife and I were in a service and we were just visiting and we were with Prophet Dawson who had a genuine gift. Prophet Dawson had a genuine gift and uh, we were sitting with him and he was frustrated. I could tell he was aggravated. He wasn't saying anything. He was just kind of, uh, uh. and the man was talking to him, oh, geez. And uh, he called my wife out of the service. The guy just called my wife out and Dawson said, so we could hear, he's a uh, oh, wrong one, <laughs> wrong one. So he called my wife out and got her in line. And uh, he, the young man said to her, God's getting ready to bless you, Prophet said. She already blessed. <laughs> and then he said, the, uh, the Lord, uh, the Lord telling me he's, you're getting ready to get a brand new Mercedes. Dawson said, she already got one. It's outside. <laughs> it's outside. <laughs> he said, it's outside. <laughs> he was, <laughs> I'm like, you know, man, even if the young guy, he was a young guy, maybe he's just getting started and he's not quite hearing well. He he's needs warm to warm up. He needs to warm up, but he picked the wrong one for his warm up act. He picked the wrong one. Uh, you know, people who have been in church all their lives, and my wife is a pastor's child. A, a, her grandfather was a pastor. The Kojic is deep in their roots, and they've been hearing and witnessing these moves all their life. Uh, you better be real when you call out somebody that got deep roots. You you, you better hit it and quit it, and and they're not gonna be patient with you to to give you time to blow on them, and and they not blowers. You're gonna you're not gonna push them down. You, you're not gonna slay them and bend their back and bend their neck beyond the fulcrum and and knock them out. And one time <laughs> somebody tried to knock her down and she wasn't going. She wasn't going. I don't know why they always pick on mine. She wasn't going. And, and finally they pushed her down. And she was trying to get up and they said, just stay down there for a while. Just stay down there. Just stay there. Please. Please. <laughs> Bishop, when I was a young preacher and I was a young you know, evangelist and, you know, prophesying, and, you know, I would be like, man, if, if people didn't go down or blah, 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 I was like, man, maybe I ain't, you know, as yeah. I got older, I probably, by the time I started pastoring my first church, I realized like, I don't, that stuff, a lot of that stuff isn't even biblical anyway. Right. You know, right. Sure. <laughs> Why do we? You know, and and I love the the performance of the prophetic in the African American church. Let me tell you, I love it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. I participate. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I participated in it. It's entertaining, even though it may not be meant for entertainment. Right. But you know it what? Is. Let me say this. That's why the crowds came to see Jesus. Yes. You know, they came for the show. Yes. They did. Yeah. I, I, I love it. In addition to that, I've found that as I've gotten older, I, I can stand across the room and speak a word or a truth and whatever demonstration is coming behind it is going to come. Yeah. Whether I stand on a chair and spin, whether I go wave a, a towel over their head, mm -hmm. or if I lay hands on them. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, and Bishop, I know you've witnessed this even when I've been at Old Landmark, mm -hmm. I don't even lay hands on women anymore. No. If my wife is with me, I have her lay hands on the women. And give and give and a lot of times I'll I'll go so far as tell my wife the word and have my wife whisper the word to their ear so mm -hmm. that they can't glamorize Dre. You know what I'm saying? Right. Listen, I go even further. Yeah. I will be up preaching and prophesying. I usually travel with at least two or, or three people, um, specifically in the city, and I'll call my prophetic team up and be like, "You prophesy, you right. prophesy, 
Oh, and my wife has a word for you too. She hates that because she'll be in the middle of like praying and interceding and stuff. And she's like got her Bible and she's making sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. And I'll be like, um, my wife has a word for you, honey. <laughs> because it's not about me. Right. It is not about me. But I used to do the same thing. I did the blowing. I did the laying hands. And wow. if they didn't go out, I'm like, why are they not going out? Let me, let me, you know, give, give it to them again. And it's just not right. working. And then it got to the point where it was like, well, I think what's more effective is them hearing and being obedient to the word. So it's the word. If you fall yeah. out crying and slobbing and stuff, you probably won't hear anything anyway. This is why I like prophesying in the microphone. I have witnesses. So I'm in control. Listen, everybody, hold on. Hold, I, I know you want to shout. We're going to shout in a minute. I need you to hear this. This is what God said. This is how he said do it. This is when he said do it. And this is why he said do it. All right. Okay. Now you can shout. <laughs> Ugh, God help us today. <laughs> you all, when you get a chance, read the commentaries. Great discussion going on on the sidelines. I'm reading it. <laughs> it is, it's excellent. I'm, I'm enjoying what you all are writing and saying thank you. My supervisor is a very delightful, colorful woman. And she's saying, yep. Yeah. <laughs> She, she got a lot of good comments and others are uh, commenting, which is uh, the purpose of a talk program. So you can talk it out, get some understanding and listen to people who are experienced. As we go forward, uh, we're here. Profits are not going anywhere. Uh, whether it becomes an official office within the denomination, it is already an established office in the word of God. Yes. And so there will be profits. How do we and what shall we expect uh, from the prophets uh, going forward in the 21st century and beyond, what do we need to look for and how should we behave? I think that one of the first things, I'm gonna jump in, cause I already know he go. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so over the last couple of months, one of the things that the Lord's been showing me is this whole Mount Carmel experience. Um, as it pertains to the true prophets and false prophets. Uh, I think our expectation is going to have to be, um, we're going to have to choose a side. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just, and I, I agree, I love the black church. I love everything about, about the black I do church. Too. I really do. Like, I do the, too. We can holler, we can scream about nothing, Whatever and it'll want. make perfect sense to us. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it like we can have whole conversations with people on a, huh, hey, huh? huh? Woo, my God, whole conversation we just had. <laughs> love it. I love all of it. Yeah. I love a good quickening. I, look, I love it. I love all of it. I know that's um, right. I think, though, that we have, um, one of my apostle fathers said to us that we have taken traditions and made them truths. Yeah. And then we have, in this culture, taken culture mm -hmm. and made them truths. Even Good. though all traditions aren't bad and all culture isn't bad, they're not the truth. And so what we're about to see, I believe, is the prophets who are established in the word, submitted to leadership, mm -hmm. demonstrators of the word and of power. And then people who are conditioned to church and people who don't have a relationship with God, there's going to have to be some sort of standoff. And it's not going to be like me standing on a stage prophesying against somebody but the body is going to have to judge and say, no, we're on the side of the Lord. It's not about the entertainment. It's not about this. It's not about the shout or how much money they said that I was going to get or how much money they raised. It has to be about this because the direction that the world is going into is spiraling down. The Bible talks about the cup of iniquity. It has mm -hmm. to fill up. But as the cup of iniquity fills up, then that means revival has to be coming. That means the demonstration of power has got to got to come. And one of the other things that the father showed me is that um, he will give us insight to go around the dangers that uh, the enemy and the world has been setting up. And it'll be the true prophets who will get up. And this is the funny part. Um, many of the people that we see on TV, the popular folk, are not the ones that we're going to be hearing from. <laughs> They're going to be still prophesying the same stuff, trying to get you to buy their books. And it's not going to be profitable for you because it's not going to be something practical that you can use in your right. everyday life or in your relationship with God. There has got to be a drive for uh, equipping the saints, 
to do evangelism prophetically. Mm -hmm. um, there's got to be a drive for the saints to evangelize and build the kingdom. And I think the next phase that we're going to see is more of an apostolic prophetic uh, merger where prophets won't just be prophesying, but they'll be training, they'll be developing, they'll be equipping the body, they'll be establishing ministries and orders mm -hmm. and functions in order to effectively minister and build the kingdom till we all come into the unity of the faith. And I'm done. See, that was real nice. Was now he about nice. to holler and preach. Come on, give it to me. <laughs> Let me run before out you, and get my tambourine or something. Before you come in, uh, Pastor Dre, uh, Prophet Dre, before you come in, one of the um, my dear members who lives out of state, she wrote, a prophet told my sister-in-law she was going to put those cigarettes down today. And she never smoked cigarettes. She says, uh, what do you call that? <laughs> I think he wanted a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, sometimes we can prophesy out of the idols of our heart. That's in, I think, Ezekiel 18. You see, okay. Ezekiel 18 or 19. We'll prophesy, prophets will prophesy. The Bible says because they have set up idols in their hearts, they will prophesy out of the idols in their heart. And so it won't be the word of the Lord. It'll be the idol of their heart. And the thing is, their position had not changed. They still mm -hmm. got the microphone. They still uh, slaying people. We're still running to their conferences. And the word of the Lord that's coming out of their mouth is really something that they want. <laughs> so maybe he just needed to take a minute and go and get him some Newport 100s in a box and pack them, <laughs> poke a couple of times. Come on, y'all. Uh, Prophet Dre, he used to be Baptist. He know how they do. No, I'm joking. I'm joking, y'all. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a joke. Do not email me or inbox me. I was Baptist when I was eight. <laughs> well, to be honest, my great grandfather used to smoke cigars in Kojic meetings. Okay, now that's then. why you're gonna be blackballed from this show. That's not why. Your, not your he great sure grandfather. My great grandfather. Uh, I'm a bishop. What is your father's first name? Your dad's first name? Leon. Leon. But well, Leon, I'm calling you. I'm calling you, brother Leon. <laughs> you should have warned me how crazy this one was. You should have warned me. <laughs> Last time we talked, you didn't warn me. All right. <laughs> now, listen, uh, great discussion. We're really, truly enjoying this because one of the things that I think that the principle that is being made, whatever your gift, you have to be careful to distinguish between your gift and your own opinion, your own personality. Because when people come to hear from God, they didn't come to hear from you. Right. And many times pastors make the mistake, we'll preach a sin, something we like or don't like. Uh, you know, we don't like the color of your hair. We don't like that hairstyle. We, we don't like those high heel shoes. We don't like your toes in, yeah. your toes out. Oh yeah, hell, hell brother. We don't like, we don't like <laughs> hell, straight all the way. <laughs> wait, because... wait, wait. I was in a convocation or a women's, women's, uh, women's convocation. And I had a former bishop, she's gone on before us now, a bishop's wife, she was the main speaker and she was up and she was preaching and she was talking about holiness and where we've gone wrong. And she said, and I'm sitting over there with all of the pastors and the preachers. And of course, and I'm loving her. She is preaching her head off about holiness. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know how we are coaching folk about holiness, holiness, yeah, subject, long skirts, clean up that makeup, put that hat on, huh? No hats in the sanctuary and men should not have long hair. Cut that hair. I said, y'all need to cut y'all hair. <laughs> <laughs> Those preachers looked at me and was like, uh, she's talking about you. I said, I know. He's like, you gonna cut your hair? I said, absolutely not. Right. right. <laughs> you, leave you, alone. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I used to uh, have, uh, we didn't call it process, but I had waves. Oh, yeah. I figure you don't have to worry about hair. God fixes that over time. <laughs> the Lord. You know what? The Lord told me to wear my hair short. <laughs> That's what happened. I had a head full of pretty hair. Hallelujah. But the Lord. Hey, woo! So, so we need to get the personality out of it, you know, really. And trying to make people bend towards what we think, and prophets can do the same uh, if they're not properly distinguishing uh, the thing. And and I, from what I read and read in the scripture, they understood that and and they knew it. And sometimes they would uh, talk just to you know, I, I don't want to be bothered, I don't want to get it wrong. So you go tell uh, Naaman dip seven times, just tell him to dip. 
seven times in the Jordan and they was insulted. Well, I thought the man would come to me. I Ooh. thought the man would come and just, you know, wave a hand or do some gesture. Well, one of the reasons I foresee this is because Naaman was a very important man and that's not somebody you want to get it wrong with. And you don't want your person there because he probably would have had some other stuff to say. I've been waiting to talk to this fool anyway and let him know what he's doing wrong and how he needs to change it. I better just let my servant go and tell him exactly what to do and leave it at that, you know, because we don't want to uh, let our flesh, which it's carnal, it's human. We don't want to let that leak out mm -hmm. into what's going on. And everything you hear, you don't have to speak. That's true. That's what you, you, you can't tell everything you know. Cannot speak everything. Go ahead, That's Prophet Dre, and finish this section yes, up for me. Please finish that. We cannot speak. Let me tell you, I, I tell I tell people this all the time. People that you know we mentor and we're connected to. Listen, there are things that the Lord shares with me about you that I'll never talk to you about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and unless you unless you come to me and say blah 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 blah, there are things that we not going. I'm not going to say. I can't say. I'm a therapist. I'm a substance abuse therapist as well. And Lord. the Lord uh, had probably had me in this particular field so that I would be bound by confidentiality. Yep. Not only naturally, but spiritually. Mm -hmm. There's information that I just cannot translate. There right. are feelings that I just cannot translate. Because if I do, one of the things that we, we know of the New Testament prophets is we have the ability to be thermostats, right? We set and change atmospheres, not just by what we speak, but even our mannerisms have the ability to shift atmospheres. And so there are things that I did. If you notice, Papa, or we, you know, when we out, I'm giggling. I'm giggling. You know why? Because if I say or deal with what is really what happening. What you're hearing and what you're knowing. Yeah. <laughs> the table will be cold. Let me Please. tell you. <laughs> nobody don't want to eat the pizza. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the spirit is saying lie. They lying. Lie. Lie, lie. You just gotta go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not. <laughs> mm. Mm. People don't Listen, play with a real prophet now. Right. Listen, the Bible says in Amos three and seven that he reveals he doesn't do anything in the earth unless he first reveals his secrets. First, his prophets. If we say everything that he's telling us, it's no longer a secret. He has to tell us so that we can pray, so that we can cause manifestations, so that we can, whatever we, he needs us to do with it. But there are certain things that in relationships with my best friend, with uh, my brother, with my wife, with my pastor, with my apostolic father, with my parents, that I will say to them that I won't utter out loud to anybody else. Because of our relationship, there are secrets that I have shared with them. They don't have to be bad, good. They're just private thoughts and feelings about specific things. God does the same thing with us. God shares with us about how he feels about our church, the great church of God in Christ, about um, our bishops, about because these are people that we pray for. These That's are right. people that he cares about. That's it right. would be foolish of prophets to get up and every single thing that he says, the we just say. And nope. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm concurrent with, with Prophet Shipman on that. I'm, I'm a little different in that. I really don't talk to anyone about these things. Like, and, and my struggle is like, like I, I have a wife, you know what I'm saying? Who sleeps with me nightly. Mm -hmm. and so there are not many things that she can withhold from me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and so I have to still, even with her, be clear enough and the things that I hear, see, and feel, so that should the Lord give me information to share with her about her, you know what I'm saying? That's right. And I'm able to share that information without any uh, muddling of the water so that uh, she can hear the Lord clearly from me too. The prophetic, the uh, being a prophet is the probably the most uncomfortable of the fivefold uh, gifts or callings that we, whatever, whatever we want to call it, it's probably the most uncomfortable because you're honestly an extroverted introvert and you don't have the ability to share all that you want and be all that you want to be because there are things that you you must keep the secret. The, the Winans wrote a song a while ago that said, secrets the Lord imparts, keep them close to your heart. Don't ever let them die. Make them the apple of your eye. You can't even make them the apple of the eye. You got to put on an eye patch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> 
They're from Detroit, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep pushing that Detroit thing. I get it. We get it. Our presiding bishop is from Detroit. Yes, from Detroit. Come on here, our first lady. And and not yes. De- and not Detroit from Detroit. From Detroit. Yeah. Detroit. <laughs> well, listen, this has been awesome, and I appreciate your comments. And I know the Saints have enjoyed it, and so many things are, are comments are coming up. Uh, the people love you, and you're here because uh, of your gift. Uh, I will say this by way of announcement. I'm looking for female prophets in the church of God in Christ. If you're a coaching woman, but you unashamedly uh, carry the moniker prophet, you you know that's your calling, that's your gift. I want to talk to you. I want to find you. I want to know who you are. I'm glad for you, but there's so few uh, that I'm, I'm sure they're there. Now, don't misunderstand. Somebody is doing the work but somebody said, you know what, I'm tired of this missionary sister thing, this reverend mother thing, whatever y'all want to call it. I am a prophet, and that's the office I'm working in, and you can love me or hate me, but, and I love my church. This I am a member of the Church of God in Christ, and I am a prophet. Hallelujah. And, and so uh, please reach out to me at bishop at oldlandmark.com, bishop at oldlandmark.com. Amen. And we're going to, as a church, Uh, I am the pastor of a a great church in Fort Wayne, Indiana, that is the host of this service. And I feel honored to have uh, two men that I believe hear from God and can see into the heart and mind of God and know how to share in formats and know how to share in secret and know how to share what can publicly be shared. Uh, Our church, is doing well. We thank God we've been able to sustain sustain ourselves through the uh, majority of the crisis. We know the pandemic is not over, still going on. For those of you that think it's over, hey, Commissioner of Health, it's not over, okay? You still need to mask. You still need to keep social distance. Don't buy the hype and don't believe the story that it's okay now. You can congregate. That's to keep the economy afloat. That's to keep the bars open. That's to keep the stores going and the restaurants full. So they're saying, you know, if we're killing the economy, the government doesn't want to bail them out. So let the people go on back. So many will die, but we got more ventilators now. They'll die, but we know how to handle that kind of surge of death. So they'll die, but, you know, people die all the time. So we're not going to try to stop that. But if you want to live, we want you to act like the pandemic uh, is in its uh, May, June, July stage as it was last year uh, when the severity was at its peak and treat people like they're radioactive. Stay away from people, even yeah. church people. I said it, even church people, yeah. you know, make your household the people that you spend most of your time with. And that's that's your safety bubble. Everybody else is outside the bubble. Here comes a stranger. Put a mask on. Somebody knock on your door. I'm coming over to visit. Uh, what can I do for you? Hey, cuz. Look, look, cuz, love you. Uh, let's Appreciate talk on the phone. Right. Here's my Zoom address, cuz. <laughs> so you have to use prudence and use wisdom. God bless my own mother. She'll be 88 in June. Amen. Mm-hmm. And she right. is the survivor of uh, 16 brothers and children, uh, brothers and sisters, 16 brothers and sisters with children and all of them have children and grandchildren. And some have great grandchildren. Even some have great grace. And they call all call her Aunt Inez. She's big auntie. She's the last survivor of all of them. That's Aunt Inez. And I have a word to all my cousins. Do not come visit my mama. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you understand why. Hey, Amen. She has done well and, and she's doing well. But we're trying to keep her around as long as we can. But uh, as far as our church, we have an issue, our building, our, our roof is the flat roof. It's a 21,000 uh, square foot building. The sanctuary section is 21,500 square foot. And we need to put a roof on the building, but above the physical plant, that's the, the, the most serious uh, area that we have that needs work. It's a very major and expensive project for a flat roof in Indiana, in the North. Uh, all of you that live up North, you know what that means. It's, it's a complication. When you have a flat roof, it's a complication. So we're praying that God will uh, turn that around. That's our prayer for our facility. Uh, And of course, for the spiritual, that the Lord will continue to add to the church, give increase, awaken gifts, and cause anointings uh, to arrive. Both of you have visited Old Landmark, and I believe you understand the vision that I, as the senior pastor, have for the church. But I want you to each to uh, uh, tune in now to the Lord and speak to Old Landmark, to me, my wife, 
but uh, particularly I want the saints as a congregation, as a body, uh, to know what thus saith the Lord from prophets that we trust and believe have an anointing from the Lord. And I will ask uh, Prophet uh, Ray to, to go first and then the final uh, remarks and expressions uh, on the same area in this tag, tag team, this prophecy, uh, Pastor Williams. All right. Me first. Ha ha. Ha ha. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Uh, hold on one second. Did your amens? And... and I don't want to limit you as the Lord speaks. Okay. Uh, but that's the target for the church. Um, so I was asking the Lord, um, because we're looking for a building. I don't really have a direction for where we're going to go, uh, but we have a flat roof. And at one point it just started leaking everywhere. Um, right after I took over the church and I started praying, asking the Lord, well, what are we supposed to do? So we got the estimates, all of that stuff, found a guy for like $8,000 um, <clears throat> and he stopped calling. And then the next estimates was like 24. <laughs> right, right. 30 something. I was like, where am I supposed to get this? And the Lord told me to sew, sew. What do you mean? So we're trying to get money. And so because we are trying to find a building, the Lord reminded me of that. And so I've been like, Lord, where do we sow? What places can we sow that are building, that are doing something specific about their building so we can sow into building so we can get our building so I can make sure I put you guys down for our mission. So we're going to start God. sowing to you guys every month. Um, I don't know how long, but we're going to be sewing every month. So you, start Thank looking you. for it. Uh, that's selfish, but I'm sewing because I believe in the power of sewing. But I, I heard the Lord say, the minute you said we were going to be prophesying to you guys, I felt like the Lord said that we were, uh, we need to look for uh, the structure shift. And as God continues to change the structure of how you do ministry uh, and uh, not just the operation of ministry like outreach and stuff but the structure of the church itself um putting other people in leadership not being afraid to move people uh into places that will um cause them to be successful and cause multiplication and increase into those it feels like there are certain people who are in specific places who have um gotten stuck and uh content they're good at what they do um but progression is not happening and it's okay um, to be able to shift them to another level of greatness that will cause them to be great in those areas. Um, as a, as the, uh, the months continue and doors continue to open up, of course, you already know you're going to be traveling more and more. And so there's going to have to be a level of trust in those people that are going to be leading. Um, as it pertains <coughs> to First Lady Amos, I feel like the Lord wants you to understand that the greatness that's on the inside of you is um, not second to anybody. There is uh, such an anointing for teaching and declaration on you um, and not just privately, but publicly. Um, and sometimes it may be difficult for you to shake off the, um, um, the tradition of your position, uh, but there's an authority that rests on you uh, as you begin to teach that causes people to pay attention. Uh, one of the things that the Lord just showed me, I had a teacher, her name was Miss Sterling. She just died last year. I had her in junior high and my mom's been doing her hair for the whole time. And whenever I would come into class late, early, or even when she would come in to get her hair done, she would call my whole first name, Ravi and the attention would be put right on her. There's a grace and anointing on you in authority as it pertains to teaching that will cause people to come and listen to you. Uh, there is also such a grace for uh, communicating uh, ideas, points, and even pulling ideas and points out of people so that they can understand almost kind of like a, a coach and or a therapist being able to help people find the answers themselves instead of being the answer. Um, and so the Lord's going to expand that quite a bit so that you can continue to develop these people under you uh, and those who are around you. And I also sense that there are uh, sometimes, <laughs> uh, it looks like constant attacks as it pertains to um, your personal family um, that would try and be distractions to where the father has been trying to get you. Uh, and so once the ministry starts going great in this area, something will happen with uh, somebody in the family, son, 
nephew, cousin, something, uh, and it will cause attention to go from here back to here, and then you'll have to go back there. And the father needs you to understand that that's exactly what that is. It isn't a, dis a distraction. Use the authority that the father has given you in order to speak to that stuff and pray because he hears you. I am telling you, First Lady Amos, there is an anointing for intercession that rests on you that is incredible uh, and heaven moves when you begin to pray. And so there are times when you have to pull yourself out of trying to physically help them. And the only thing that you need to be able to do is pray because the father responds to that because the enemy keeps trying to distract what he is trying to do, uh, even in the areas of communication and trying to communicate uh, amongst the family and family members. Uh, and it also looks like people, family members who are a part of the ministry, the enemy has always come in to try and pervert the way that uh, people understand and the way that people hear. The father says that he's gonna bring some peace to those areas so that being able to communicate back and forth won't be so hard. It won't be, uh, I need you to do this. Well, you can't talk to me. like. It's always some sort of contention there. Uh, and here's the last part, that there are areas of forgiveness that needs to happen. Um, there have been words and things that have been done. It looks like even uh, a physical thievery uh, for money or uh, taking advantage, like all kinds of little things that have caused injury. Uh, and the father needs you to be able to just forgive. I know it may seem as if you have forgiven them, but then there are times when you look and you remember. And so the father needs you to forgive those people so that you can move forward past that so that the restoration and the healing that needs to happen for them is going to happen through your forgiving of them. And that's the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, man of God. Receive it. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. We received the word. Amen. And the word of God is blessed because it is indeed the word of God. Amen. Pastor Dre. Unmute, Pastor. Bless you, Bishop. Uh, the first thing that I want to share what the Lord has been sharing with us concerning uh, uh, 2019, 2020, 2021, and that this is an era of reset. Uh, the struggle that we are dealing with uh, is we've gone too far away. We've entered into the arena of the apostasy, and many of us have not realized the era that we're living in. And what has transpired within the body of Christ and within the church is that uh, we've glossed over uh, mm -hmm. the traditions and doctrines and truths by uh, making people feel better by what we say about them in the moment. The Lord says that this reset that transpired over that this last uh, 18 months has come to cause us to return back to the truth. This is the struggle though, that the prophets must arise in this arena and in this time in order to cause truth to be conveyed in spite of. It is time, bless the Lord, that these things begin to be broken down systemically so that the people will be able to receive the Holy Ghost once again. Again, we are living in the time frame where the reception of the Holy Ghost has been negated. And that is the time that we are struggling in now. Our job is to reset, reset. And the Lord says, old landmark must reset. The Lord showed me Fort Wayne about four weeks ago, Pop, and I was praying and I was struggling because I will never allow as a son your work to be minimized. And the condition that the church is in is not because of your greatness. It's because the people have not uh, engrafted themselves into your DNA spiritually. And so this is the era to reset them. I felt the Holy Ghost there. Reset them and engraft them into who you are truthfully from A to Z. They've become in the place not only of complacency, but also in a place of strain. The complacency says, this is what we do and what we've always done. The strain is that I'm tired of doing what we've always done, but I have to continue to do it. Our job now is to reset. I felt the Holy Ghost again, reset, reset in the place to where the mentality must see that the fire of the Holy Ghost, once again, and Pop, I know that you don't like to have to rev up uh, and go in the building to rev up, but I keep seeing you in your robe spinning and dancing in the building and the people returning to your praise. And so, I <laughs> all right, all right. 
I apologize. And so our journey now is to revive and resuscitate. Now, I don't know if you've been seeing this, but it's been in my spirit the last seven weeks, reset, reset, reset. And it's our job now to reset and cause the people of God to see the Holy Ghost once again. I have promised uh, my wife and the leaders in the ministry this, that we will see the manifestations of the Holy Ghost again. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know people think this kind of stuff. Wow. I'm saying the true manifestation of the Holy Ghost. And so my only admonishment, Bishop uh, Prophet Ray, uh, and at this point is uh, Mother Dylan, Mother Dylan, uh, share with Mother Dylan that the activity uh, has been fruitful in the minds of the people who she's been evangelizing to. Mm -hmm. Share with her that the activity has been fruitful, but tell her the Lord says she has to now go and get them because they need to see her face again. I hear the Lord. They need to see her face again. All right. This is what will draw them this last time. The Lord says one last time, let them see her face once again. And so uh, <laughs> this is the era of reset, 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 reset to the place to where it's almost foundational. Yes, yes. This is who Jesus is. This is what the Holy Ghost does. Reset and watch how God begins to manifest himself true. Well, let the church say amen. Yes, sir, probably. One more thing, uh, yes, two more. Um, one, this one was for you. As he was prophesying about reset, I clearly heard the Lord say, uh, stop trying to fix everything. Yeah. Um, it's very easy for you to see things that are falling and to jump in like, what's his name? Uriah, to try and catch the ark. Um, you're going to yeah. overextend yourself. Uzziah, yeah. Uh, Uzziah, that's his name. Uh, you're going to overextend yourself. Stop. There are certain things that the people have to fail at. They're going to have to fail so that they can learn. If you keep doing that, then you become the God for them. And they don't have to do anything because they know that you're going to jump in and fix it. He needs you to stop. You, you're, that's the word of the Lord, that reset for you to refocus exactly where he is calling you and what your vision is, not just for the church, but for the jurisdiction, your private ministry, your um, secular ministry, all of that stuff has got to be focused and set because the way that he wants to use you is so international and broad, they have to be able to carry the weight. And so that's going to be, uh, you should probably write a book too. Um, uh, you and uh, uh, Prophet Dre, there's such an anointing for writing um, uh, and uh, for Prophet Dre for clarity, uh, bringing clarity to the scriptures, not just in the prophetic, but certain areas that have been taught uh, that the father is, has been unfolding. Um, and it's going to be like, whoa, how come we didn't know this when they read your information? It's, it's gonna be really good. Um, last thing is Mother Dylan. There's such a, a supernatural, you said Mother Dylan, and I saw her operating in the supernatural. There is such a grace on you to operate in the supernatural. Uh, do not hold back, operate, operate. I don't care what nobody says, lay hands on the sick, watch them recover, do, do everything that the father says, because this is going to be the season of manifestation when you go after them this is the season and i'm not talking about in the next 10 years i'm talking about the next couple of yeah. weeks and months hallelujah see the manifestation of the hand of god he is with you you yeah. are right on the right track you are doing exactly what the father has called you to do now he's gonna open you up real big and pour you out so that people can see and hear that God really is with you. Because there's been people who've been like, well, I don't know. I don't know why you made this decision. I don't know why you did that. Well, it's because it was the hand of God. Hallelujah. God knows exactly what he's doing in this season for you. And I'm done. Wow. Somebody say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen says, let it be so. It is so. It is true. Well, saints, it's been a blessing. You all certainly have heard from the prophets and we thank God for each of you and the words that have been spoken. If you haven't given, make your giving, giving choice. I ask a minimal gift of $5 if at all possible, but do whatever you can do. 
make your gift to Old Landmark Kojic on the Givelify or to the Old Landmark, dollar sign Old Landmark on the Cash App. But whatever you do, walk in the spirit and fulfill what God has to you. Name of your church, that's right. Walk in the spirit ministries. Amen, Pastor Shipman. Amen, hallelujah. A decision, right? The decision church. Amen, with Pastor Dre. Amen, and when you walk in the spirit and to make the right decision, you'll end up at the old landmark. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we praise God. It's been a blessing. Love one another. I will see you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Amen. And let's bless the Lord. Prophet, stay with me just for a moment as we terminate with the link. Amen. And you all, we're going to go out on this praise. The presence of the Lord is. Where is he? Where is he? Presence of the Lord. He's here. Yeah. Presence of the Lord. Y'all better feel something. I wouldn't have a religion I couldn't feel sometime. Come on, church, let's go higher. Hey, hey, Spirit of the Lord is here. I hear you at home. I see you rejoicing in the Spirit. I feel it. Oh, yeah. Spirit of the Lord, he's here. Spirit of the Lord is here. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Can y'all feel that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You better give him some praise. The power of the Lord is here. Where is he, church? He's right there in your home, in your church, in your car. Wherever you are, he is. Oh, yes, he is. God bless you, Sister Glennette. Thank you. Mother Dylan, we appreciate you. Sister Brenda, J.W. Anderson, all the way from Warsaw, bless you. Amen. Sister Roberta Toon, Geneva Doyle, and the Sharp, the Sharp family. Amen. We love you all. Anterior, God bless you. Mother Supervisor Dylan, the Johnsons, Minister Eubank, appreciate you. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Sister Sarah, God bless you. Blessing of the Lord is here. Weren't you blessed tonight? We got a blessing from the Lord. Feel it in the atmosphere. Breath of the Lord is here. I know y'all rocking. You better rock with this. Sound the alarm. He's in the temple. Let all the people praise him now. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Are we churching up in here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can feel. Can you feel him? You ought to feel something. And I'm gonna get my right now. Woo! I'm shouting in the spirit. Oh yeah! Come on, church. We're gonna praise our way up out of here. That's right, Sister Manley. That's right, Sister Capers. I can feel the presence of the Lord. Right now I can feel the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Don't make me go soprano. Ooh. I feel the presence of the Lord. Right now. We're about there. Keep on, keep on. Listen. Can't you feel him? I know it's that time. We love you. We're going to look to see you. Come and join us. I like this part.
Up to you. I can't feel the presence of the Lord. I'm going to get my blessing. I'm going to get my blessing. Yeah, yeah. All right, church. Yeah. Mr. Osman, Edward Osman, God bless you. Thank you, Sister Glennett. I appreciate that. Mr. Johnson, we appreciate Deacon Luther, we appreciate it. I wish I had my Hammond organ in front of me now. I feel like playing some church music. I see the drummers out there. Horn playing. Well, God bless you. 